Hello, makers, and welcome to Outside of Spectiva Studios. It's finally a nice day, and it's a perfect day for a project I've been thinking about for quite a while, and that is I want to work with you folks to create a brand new painting easel for less than $20 worth of parts. And I want to show you around this easel right now so you get a bigger, better sense of what this can do for us in the future. This is the uh, easel I've been working with for the last few years, and uh, I built this my very self, and I'm going to show you how to build this your very self. And as you can see, it's not incredibly complicated, nor does it need to be. We have a foundation here, which is really just a combination of two by fours, and I'll show you how to do that. And then in the back here, we basically have two boards that run uh, parallel here, and they have a slot between them, and that just allows us to take our hardware and put it in here. What this hardware allows us to do, I'll loosen these a little bit here, is to take our front board, and this is where our canvas would be mounted, and it allows us to be able to lift it up vertically. Let me just get a little bit looser here. But again, one of the things about this design is the flexibility of being able to raise the canvas up and down to meet my needs as a painter. Now, by the way, this is limited by only the, uh, the height of your ceiling, uh, so you may have a little bit more opportunity in, uh, in, in some cases than in others. But the bottom line is simply this. We have something that is a foundation that will hold our canvas. It will hold it nice and vertically so we can paint on it, and it will also give us an opportunity to adjust this thing as we need to, and it's pretty stable. And uh, the beautiful thing about this is you can do this your very self. I'm going to show you how to create this without using any kind of power tools. We're going to use only hand tools and really just a few cuts for the bottom. Now I do, I am going to use an electric screwdriver uh, as a, a way to just put the screws in faster. Just makes it easier. I'm going to show you how to put this all together. But before we do that, we need to go to our big box store and do a little bit of shopping and pull home the parts we need. We are back in with the fruits of our labors. So again, not a, not a very difficult shop at all. We have a single 2x4. This is an 8-foot 2x4. It's been milled down to a certain degree, just to keep it smooth. Uh, we have these 2-inch two, uh, two, two inch by 2-inch, basically rods, if you will. And these are pressure treated, which is not necessary. It's all I could find. But as long as they're fairly straight and can work well together and be parallel, that's really the objective. And perhaps the most expensive part of our purchase here is just this uh, slider, this backboard, that, which is where the canvas itself is going to mount. And this is already pre-milled, and so it's uh, smooth, beautiful, ready to go. And then uh, we have some hardware here which we're going to be using, of course, to hold the board on and pull things together. Now, one of the things I did not include in here are the screws I'm going to be using because I do have some of those screws already. But as I mentioned, we're going to be uh, doing everything using hand tools because, you know, I, I, I'm not bragging, just saying. I do have a, a table saw. I have some things that would make this a lot easier for me. But you may not. And I want to show you how easy this is to actually create what we need. So I have here a saw. I have here just as, this is a miter box. And if you're not familiar with a miter box, it just allows you to make straighter lines than you may make on your own. So it just kind of helps you guide the saw. That's really what it does. Not necessary. And for our design, you know, if your ends aren't perfectly square, it's not going to really make a big difference. But again, the first thing we're working on here is the idea of this foundation, which consists of really four pieces of two by four. Now, originally when, to, when I designed this, I was just thinking I needed some sort of a, a base to work on. I think for my new design, I want to make the base a little bit longer, just give it a little bit more stability. This is two foot. Maybe I'll go for something that's like two and a half feet. Doesn't have to be an awful lot more. And again, if I bring this back a little bit more, currently what we have in here is I'm working with uh, basically 14 inches. I may bring this out to 18 inches. I'll get a little bit more stability because they have a larger base. And I'll show you how how I work with making sure this thing doesn't become top heavy as we go through it. But let's get started by measuring out our cross boards here on the two by fours and get started on getting those sawn up.
All right, so there are the five pieces we need cut from our two by four. And again, this is gonna make up our cross piece for the base here. Again, I'm making this a little bit longer. And then I'm gonna extend these guys out like this. And then I have a, a spacer that's gonna sit at the back of these two like this. And then finally up here, I just have something I, I used as a stop block. It's gonna just prevent this from rising after, after a certain point. So we'll do that. So the first thing I wanna be able to do now is to pull together the foundation. I'm just gonna get this constructed. And again, I'm using some, uh, some reused materials. And in this case, I'm using some, uh, some deck screws that I have from a previous project that I worked on. And I'm using two and a half inch deck screws. Now, you don't necessarily need to go this extreme. This is, you know, weatherproof, it's hardcore stuff. But for the most part, we just need something that's gonna hold our pieces in place. So if you have smaller screws or even nails, they would work here as well. I'm gonna start with the back piece first of all. And I'm gonna find the center distance here. Again, this is a 30 inch piece of wood. So I'm gonna mark it at 15 inches just so I have a frame of reference when I'm putting the other pieces together. The other thing I'm gonna to wanna to do now is to take and to butt my backboards from that center point. And again, I'm using this pretty much to eyeball it. And what I might do to make things a little bit easier for me is if I use my spacer, right? So I've already cut this piece here and I'm able to come in here and mount it between the ends that I already automatically have my spacing when I mount it to the front board, it's gonna be a lot easier. So let me try this first of all, again. What I can also do, and sometimes this is the easiest way of working with wood, is to get your screws started, because otherwise trying to hold pieces together while you're working on your screws can be challenging. Right? And we want to put them almost all the way through, not quite all the way through. We want to get them started fairly well. There we go. And now, take my spacer and again I may hold it on the ground just so it has some stability I'm going to drive the screws in the rest of the way right so now we have our spacer in place I'm going to do this on the other side with the other board that's extending back and again I'm going to get my screw started on this one as well is to get something that's fairly square and again we have a little bit of wiggle room here if we need to adjust it but that's going to be the part that goes back from the front of the easel and now it's an opportunity for me to be able to figure out how it works here in the center line again that I drew here it's just helping me to eyeball where I should place this piece of wood and so with that said what I can do also is I can either mark it with a pencil which is easy enough really the line this will be the center point of the board I want to screw into here as well and that way now I can just come in here and say let's get four screws started and now it's just an opportunity to again line line things up and uh, I'm just going to hold the backing of my hand and let's get that in there Here we are, our foundation is ready. Now again, it's not an elegant foundation, nor does it need to be for what our purposes are. It's really gonna allow us to do what we need to do. And the next thing we wanna be able to do, if we look at the old easel here, is we wanna to start to mount these vertical boards. And again, they're just really towed in. If we look down here, we've just screwed them in from the sides on both sides, and that's really the only thing that's mounting them. And then at the other end here, we're gonna make sure we have this stop block that holds them together. So. Let's, uh, let's get those in place next.
Now, as we did when putting the foundation together, it's sometimes easier to get your spacers in so you get the proper distance. And what I want to be able to do here is make sure that there's at least a quarter of an inch gap between these boards so that the hardware has a place to sit and to run up and down. So I'm going to take my, uh, my six inch spacer, which is this guy right here, and I'm going to put it into place uh, right now just so I can make sure that the boards are together where they need to be at the top. And the primary purpose of this board is simply just to serve as a way to hold these pieces together so they don't go anywhere and so I leave a distance. And as you can see, there's a distance. It's probably a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, but I want to make sure it's not hugely big. It doesn't need to be, but big enough for the hardware that we have to run up and down through it. So let's get this mounted and into place. Okay, so we now have everything in where we need to. We have our spacer. The next thing we need to do is tie this in with the foundation that we've already built. Now to make this easier, we're gonna do the whole thing lying down. Well, not us lying down, it lying down. It's just a lot easier without having to fight gravity. Right, look how beautifully that's coming along. We're uh, we're definitely we're definitely close to it. Look at that. It, it's a tall drink of water right there. But the beautiful thing about this now is we need to be able to put that board on. And the final board that we have, and I'll look at my prototype here, or the original, is that uh, this has a board that sits on the front. And the thing that really makes this easel work is that this board is designed again to slide up and down on the runners that we've had, so we can adjust where the canvas is and how we can approach it. So. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to have to drill a few pilot holes in the center of this board. And again, I will measure across with my measuring tape to make sure I know where the center is. It doesn't really matter necessarily where these bolts go in because it's really, you know, it's going to help us to adjust where it is. But I think this kind of configuration so we have some stability is good. Now, I'm working with these carriage bolts here. And these carriage bolts are, I believe, three and a half inches long because on the original, the, uh, the, the carriage bolts that I have are fairly short, so it makes a little bit, I don't have much to work with here in getting the wing nut and the washer on. So I just want to make it a little bit easier for myself. But again, I need to figure out how to drill these holes and where to drill them. And so again, I'm using a quarter inch, so that means it's a quarter inch across here. And I'm going to use an 8 30 seconds inch uh, drill bit to do this. Now again, I just want to make something that's a little bit bigger than this. I'm making it actually quite a bit bigger than this, and it's going to give me a little bit of wiggle room. I don't mind. I want these to be able to go into the hole pretty easily and to be tightened down. And this is a good screw, a good drill bit, I should say, in order to do that. So let's go and measure out our board and figure out the best place to put those holes. All right, finally, our last step is simply to get this slider on here so we can move it up and down. Again, I'm just going to get my carriage bolt through there, make sure it goes into the gap. Beautiful. And then a washer, and then once again, a wing nut. It's now, with this loosened up, I now can raise my board up and down. And again, I might need to adjust that a little bit, but if my canvas needs to go way up, way, way, way up. Now I'm limited by this top bolt right now, but that's plenty tall, and it's certainly tall enough for my studio. And again, this just gives me an opportunity to raise the canvas up with one of work on the bottom of it without you know being on my knees or sitting in a chair I have an opportunity to do that to raise and lower it and that is the overall objective of what we're dealing with here now one of the things to also keep in mind with this easel apart from the fact that it's really affordable and easy to build I mean quite literally uh, this has been built in less than an hour with me explaining to you all the parts and how we put it together. And again, you don't have to have fancy power tools to do anything like this. You can do this with a saw. And if you have a cordless drill, drill that works. If you don't, you know, a screwdriver will work to get those screws in as well. But the bottom line is that we now have something that we can mount our canvas to. Now in next week's video, I want to share with you my solution for having a way to mount my canvas on this to allow me to not only adjust the canvas up and down, but also to, for me to have a lot of flexibility in the size of canvases that I can put on here. I'm going to show you how we can build some frames that allow us to have as big a canvas as we really want. I have a five foot by five foot canvas I use here, three by two canvases. We can even go much smaller depending on what our needs are. But you have a lot of flexibility. And in next week's video, I'm going to show you how we can set this up 
to be basically anything for everything in our studio. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this project. I know it's a bit of a departure for what we generally work on, but I think it's such an important thing to have the right tools for the job. And stuff that you can make yourself very easily without having to spend a lot of time and a lot of money is, is, is bueno. It's, it's muy bueno as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're not a subscriber, we encourage you please to hit that subscribe button. It helps us out. It allows more people to see our videos and we want that to happen. We want you to see them. I'm glad you stumbled across this. I hope it's beneficial for you. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you real soon.